This section is the introductory section to uh, linear programming. Uh, you're going to find out that when we solve linear programming problems, the first method we're going to use is called the graphing or the geometric method. So we're going to have to learn how to graph uh, linear inequalities uh, on a grid. And so basically the guidelines are if you want to graph a linear inequality in two variables, you first graph the associated equation and then you'll either graph it as a solid or a dashed line and I call this the boundary. Now if the inequality has the equal to with it like less than or equal to greater than or equal to you use a solid line but if it doesn't have the less the less than or equal to if it just has the less than or the greater than you'll do a dashed line. And then the way I teach students to know which side of the line to shade uh, is you choose a point that's on the plane that is not on the line and then you evaluate the inequality at this point and you will either get a true or false statement. If you get a true statement you shade the same side of the boundary that your test point is on. If you get a false statement you shade the opposite side. So let me do a couple of examples here. So first of all, let's take a look at this one. 2x minus 3y is less than or equal to 6. Okay, so that's the inequality. And so what I'll do is I'll graph the boundary, which would be 2x minus 3y equals 6. And you know how to graph these lines. We've done it before. Just uh, find the uh, x and y intercepts. If x is 0, uh, you can solve it for y. y would be negative 2. And if y is 0, solve for x and get 3. So then um, you would uh, identify or you know plot your your two intercepts here and then uh, let's look and see if we have the equal to so we do we have less than or equal to so when you draw the line through them it's going to be a solid boundary so the boundary line is going to be solid now the question is do I shade above the boundary or do I shade below the boundary? So do I shade above it or do I shade uh, below it? Alright, so the question is which side should I shade? So the easiest way to do that is to pick a test point and you can you can actually test any point as long as it's not on the line but in 90% of the cases your test point that you that's easiest to use is just the origin 0, 0. So I'm going to plug 0, 0, this point here, into the inequality and see if I get a true statement or a false statement. So if you plug 0, 0 into this, you'll get 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0 is less than or equal to 6. So that's going to tell us that 0 is less than or equal to 6. And of course that's a true statement. So since 0 is less than or equal to 6, is, since that's a true statement, then I'll shade everything on the same side as the test point, and therefore that would mean I shade everything above the line because the test point is also above the line. Okay? And so you can see here uh, how you shade, you know, depends on how you want to do it. You can see this is already pre shaded, but you know, you can get a, a map pencil or you can just, you know, draw the draw lines like this to do the shading. But you need to make sure you identify the, the proper region. Okay? Now, on the second example here, I have 2x minus 3y is greater than 6. So it's going to be the same boundary equation, 2x minus 3y equals 6. So the intercepts are going to be the same. So it's still going to go through 0, negative 2, and 3, 0. But notice with this one, I don't have the equal to. So when I draw the line, notice I drew a broken boundary because the points on the line would actually not be part of the solution. And then I will test uh, the point 0, 0 again. So I'll test this point. And notice when I plug 0, 0 into this one, I'll get 0 is greater than 6, which is a false statement. So that means I have to shade the region below the line. So I have to shade this 
region down here because if you get a false statement you have to shade the opposite side of your test point. So that means the solutions would be all of these points that fall below the line. And so that's how you graph a single uh, linear inequality. All right, let's do a couple more real quick. All right, let's take uh, 2x plus 3y is greater than 12. And so the boundary would be 2x plus 3y equals 12. And if you let x be 0, then y would be 4. And if you let y be 0, x would be 6. So this line goes through the point 0, 4, which is right there, and the point 6, 0, which is right there. And since it's just greater than, there's no equal to, I would actually draw a broken boundary. So I draw the broken boundary through there. And then I'm going to test uh, the point 0, 0. And when I test this point 0, 0, if I plug it into this, I'll get 0 is greater than 12, which is false. And since this point lies below the uh, boundary, I actually have to shade the points above the boundary. So I shade... I shade the points above the boundary, so that would give me this region on this side of the line, and that would be the solution. And then the next one here is 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12. Same boundary, so therefore I'd have the same intercepts. So again, it's going to go through the point 0, 4, and 6, 0. This time it will be a solid line because it has the equal to with it. And again, if I test 0, 0 for, for this uh, inequality, I'll get a true statement, because if I plug 0, 0 in here, I get 0 is less than or equal to 12, which is a true statement. So I would shade the same side as my test point, and this time it would be below the line. So I would shade you know, everything, whoops, everything below the line. So again, uh, you can see I've already got these pre-shaded for you. Now, if you have uh, something like x is greater than 3, then the boundary would simply be this line right here, uh, which would be this line x equal 3 is a vertical line. So your boundary there would be, let me draw that, just identify it for you. This is the line x equal 3. And notice I drew a broken line because I have x is greater than 3, but not greater than or equal to. Now on this one, you can just use common sense. Here's x equal 3. Every, every place on this line, x is 3. So just think, okay, which side of this line would x be greater than 3? Well, it would be all the points to the right of the line. So you would shade everything to the right of the line for x is greater than 3. Now the next one here, y is less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, well here's the x-axis right here. So let me just label that for you. And so the line y equal negative 1, the boundary line here, y equal negative 1, would actually be this line right here. It's going across there. So that's the line y equals negative 1. And notice I did a solid, I have a solid boundary. Let me just get that out of the way. But anyway, that's the line y equal negative 1. And that's a solid boundary because I have less than or equal to negative 1. And then just ask yourself, well, where is y less than negative 1? Would it be above y, uh, this line, or would it be below it? Well, since this line represents all values for y equal negative 1, y is less than negative 1 would be below it. So I would shade everything below the line. Okay. And then to wrap it up, let me just show you some graphs about the quadrants if you wanted to graph everything greater than or equal to zero you would simply graph since this is the line the y-axis is actually the line x equals zero so you would this would be your boundary the y-axis and then greater than zero would be to the right so you would just shade everything to the right of the y-axis now if you wanted to um, graph y is less than zero then and actually I've made a mistake here I should have a dashed line so so if you want to graph y, y is less than zero well the line y equals zero is actually a um, a horizontal line 
let me fix this for you in just a second here. We'll just pick one of these dashed lines here. It doesn't really matter which one. Okay, so now you can see I would have a, a broken line, but where's y less than zero? It would be below this, this uh, x-axis. Because remember, the line y equals zero is actually the x-axis. So we shade everything below it. Now, this third one here is actually a primitive form of a system of inequalities. And we're going to talk about those in the next section. But uh, you're going to see when we get into uh, solving linear programming problems, we're going to see this pair shows up quite a bit because... Uh, X and Y generally will represent some concrete items that we will, we will not have a negative number of those items. So therefore we'll know that the X and the Y values both have to be non-negative. So that means X and Y must be greater than or equal to zero. Well, if X and Y must be greater than or equal to zero, you just identify the uh, portion of the grid where X and Y are both greater than or equal to zero and it turns out that just identifies the first quadrant so anytime you see x and y both greater than or equal to zero it's all the points in the first quadrant and it also includes it also includes the uh, the boundaries so it would include the boundaries there because of the equal to Okay, so that would be, this region here would be where X and Y is greater than or equal to zero. So this, I covered this section in just one video because uh, it's really just an introductory section to graphing a single uh, linear inequality. And in the next uh, video, I'm going to show you how to graph systems of linear inequalities.